Yo boys, DJ Power here. Uh, time for the second video of my spam videos. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Mako V 4.5. As you know, made a video a while ago talking about the Mako V 4. And if you watch the Texas videos, specifically part 2, I did talk about how there will be a Mako V 4.5 video eventually, and how it was way better than the V4. So let's talk about it. Um, what's really the changes? All right, let's go over that real quick. For those who don't know, um, gills are smaller. They don't exactly go to the walls as far, so you have better structural integrity, um, and it doesn't interfere as much. Uh, and they're moved up. That's it. Now, why does that little bit change my opinion so much? Think about it. The fin was hitting a spot right here. Now, why does that matter? Well, the fins were down here. The fins were at the exact, or the gills were at the exact same spot as the fin. So, that weak spot where these were going so far against the walls of the channel made a really, really good sweet spot for the blade to just crack the handle down the middle. So them moving and making them smaller helps with rigidity so it doesn't break. And along with that, sorry my brain is like going hell slow. Along with that, they also added these little recesses in the handles for the fin. So now, you don't hear the fin hitting the channel. And it actually sounds pretty good now. So that's really good. Everything about the Mako V4.5 um, fixed a lot of my problems with the V4. So what do I still not like about it? Still channel. Still really not a fan of it being channel. I won't lie. Is it better? Does it leave less of a sour taste in my mouth? Yeah, 100%. This isn't a problem anymore. But I still wish it was sandwich. And on top of that, the blade still isn't hardened. That matters because a lot of newer flippers are probably going to beat it. Um, and when you beat a knife with a blade that isn't hardened, it will bend. That happened with my V4. That's happened with other knives I've had in the past that weren't hardened. And it's happened to a lot of other people. So... It's not something that's like rare or doesn't happen. Squid knows it happens. They talked about it in the Will Hirsch video, um, the new one. So Lucas knows, all right? That's why the Madco has a hardened blade. So yeah, um, blades being hardened really does matter. That is a big deal. And the fact that this one isn't does matter. And yeah, you need to know about that. Now, if you aren't beating this thing, then it is a very good option. And uh, I would recommend it somewhat. Um, I don't know. I, I still think 110 is quite a bit. Um, and with this one, it's not entirely against squid. You know, 110 was a lot for a product that would break semi-consistently. But now that the product doesn't break semi-consistently, then I don't think it's crazy overpriced. You know. But that's just me. Uh, really quick tolerances. So 
So obviously it's not going to be the best tolerances you've ever seen in your life because it's just washers, no bushings. So, you know, that's just how it goes. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I really want to bring up. Um, because honestly, I brought up everything else in the previous video, so not a whole lot has changed between the V4 and the 4.5. It's just these little things that were changed were the main gripes, um, considering that the gill pattern is now useful, because, you know, that's where your pointer and thumb are when you fan. So it actually does give a tiny bit of grip. You know, it is a little useful. Um... And it doesn't create that same weak point like it did before, you know, between smaller gills and it not being where the fin is. So, you know, it does fi fix a lot of my gripes that I had with it. Um, but again, as I said before, I still don't think that it is 100% worth the money now. Um, you know, just between 6061 aluminum unhardened steel blade. Um, I don't know. But again, I mean, it's better than it used to be. It is definitely more worth than the V4. You know, if you see one on secondary market and it's hovering for around 90 bucks, go for it. You know, it'll treat you good, you know, good enough especially if you don't beat it. So, um, that's really the biggest, the biggest thing is that if you're going to buy one, just don't beat it because I promise you it will not survive it. The blade will bend and it'll keep bending and it'll bend back and forth so much to the point that it'll snap. That will happen. Now, yes, covered squid warranty. That's great. But I don't think anybody really wants to keep sending their knife back and forth because, you know, it's their beater. So, if you don't have a problem shipping your knife back and forth to squid every, you know, so often because you need a new blade, then go for it, man. You got a good beater here. Um, but if you don't want to do that, um, then you have two options. Either don't beat it or get a different knife to beat. So... I think that about wraps up my opinions on this guy. Again, no editing straight to upload. Um, sorry for my like slow brain retard pauses, but I'm tired and I got work in like five and a half hours. So yeah, I should really go to bed, but uh, yeah, um, real quick, uh, because I mean, I guess that's the end of talking about this fucking thing, so, real quick, let's talk about Blade Show, let's talk about what I got, um, start from the beginning, got the Prisma, as you guys saw, if you watched the Blade Show video, which again, go watch that if you haven't, um, big fan of this thing great um, I would recommend this over the Mako just save up like an extra what 40 bucks and I promise you it is it is quite a significant difference uh, this thing is fantastic and I I 100% recommend this um, I might make a video down the line about this um, let me know if you guys would be interested in hearing what I have to say about the Prisma. Because I'm not sure if I want to make a video on it. But uh, if you'd be interested in uh, hearing what I have to say about this guy, you let me know. And if you guys want to hear about it that bad, then I will I will make a video on it. So, just let me know. But yeah, Prisma by Machine Wise, big fan. Very good knife, very good. Uh, second thing I bought at Blade was a Medusa. Which is, uh, very good. You saw the video. I hope. If you didn't, 
I made a video comparing the trainer to the Live Blade um, TLDR. I think this is better than the Live Blade, and uh, it is one of the few knives in a higher price range that I legitimately think is worth the money. Um, retail on these was four twenty five, and I legitimately think that this is worth it. So, yeah, love Grant, uh, Fellowship Blades, uh, Medusa Trainer, V two. <clears throat> Next thing that I got at Blade was my Max Ace PN. Um, I actually got this for uh, for free from Bally Comp. So. Yeah, kind of a funny story about that um, with Blade HQ. So basically very um, complicated story slash long story short. Max Ace wanted to sponsor Bally Comp. They sent Blade HQ a package, a ton of their knives, um, but didn't pay Blade HQ to be an official sponsor. So Blade HQ was just like, okay, we're not going to make them a sponsor because they didn't pay for it. Um, but they sent us a bunch of knives, so we're just going to give them to the flippers. So, yeah, that's how I got m one of these. And I hung around the, uh, the flipping comp area right after the comp. So I got one of these. And my friend Aaron got a Covenant V2, which, uh, destroyed my thumb, which you'll see in part two. It's healing up now, so it's good. But, yeah. This thing's nutty. Uh, it's very good. I should probably do tolerances on whatever. Here's tolerances. So there's that. Here's Prisma. There's that. Uh, fourth thing I got at Blade, I got a Max Ace Apostle premium version. Uh, this was also one of the knives for the Bally Comp, but I did not get this for free. Uh, instead, I had to pay someone and buy it off them. So, that was great. And they fucking got every little penny they could out of me for it. So that sucks, but this thing's great. I'm a big fan. Very, very unique knife in design. As it uh, has a Zen nipple, but it's actually a pinsless. So it's very cool. Here's tolerances in the sound. So yeah, this thing's very, very cool. Big, big fan. Um, next thing I got at Blade uh, is actually in that case over there. So let's take a quick little trip over here and open my little, <clears throat> my little Max Ace case that came with the Apostle. I got this guy. This... <clears throat> Sorry, voice getting all fucky. This is a Defcon Bally. Uh, I don't think it has a name, but uh, yeah, it's it's weird. Sport blade, but uh, 
does this weird thing right here. If you pull this little tab, you can change the blades. So, yeah. Here's sound intolerances. So yeah, this thing's weird, um, but it's really cool. Everything on it is titanium. Um, from what I know, even the blades are titanium. So you could anodize every single piece on this knife. Um, and it was pretty cheap for what it was. Um, it's just not the best flipper. It's like a better artisan cutlery because it has that big, like, chunky piece in the middle, like where the pivots are. So it's a little pivot biased. But, uh, still very cool. So, yeah, there's that. And then there's two other blades it comes with. So that's cool. Put it back in its little case. And off you go. And then last but not least, Pible Trainer. Um, quick tolerances. So yeah, this thing is, uh, something. Um, it's not very good. So, I'm just hoping there will be a V2 eventually. Um, it's got no handle weight, so that's cool. Um, and, uh, blade heavy is a bit of an understatement. So, yeah. That's this thing. But yeah, that's about it. That was the last thing I bought at Blade Show. Um, this video is all over the place. But that's about it. So, I'll see you boys later. Um, let me know if you want dedicated videos on any of those knives. Uh, yeah. That's about it. Um, again, as I teased in last video, Serif video soon, or Serif clone, Serif clone video soon. So yeah, be excited for that. Bye guys.